Hello beautiful creatures, it's Cordelia. Welcome back to my channel, Fira, where I talk about gothic beauty and fashion, mental health and lifestyle. If these are all things you're interested in talking about, please be sure to click that subscribe button down below. So today's video is going to be a lifestyle video about polyamory. If you are not interested in polyamory or learning about it, I'm going to recommend that you click out of this video right now because it's going to be all about polyamory and if you're not interested in it, you're just going to be bored. Instead, I'm going to recommend that you watch my recent chatty purple makeup tutorial where I talk about other things that you might be more interested in, like um, my top five favorite life-changing books, uh, my, my current five favorite bands, stuff like that. So let me give you a little bit of background about myself. I'm polyamorous and I've been polyamorous for over three decades. I am bisexual and that means that I'm attracted to more than two genders. Um, I'm somewhere on the demisexual spectrum because I'm somebody who needs to have an emotional connection with somebody before I can be romantic with them. Um, I'm also somebody who's in the kink community and uh, let's see. I'm, all, I'm goth, so like I'm, I'm in a bunch of little different subcultures. <laughs> so yeah, I guess the important things to know about me are I'm polyamorous, I'm kiki, um, I'm bisexual, I've got some demisexual things going on, and um, I'm neurodivergent, <laughs> and I currently am in therapy to fix some trauma I have, so yay. If you are not in therapy, I always recommend people talk to uh, a therapist and consider therapy because I think therapy is beneficial for everyone and will make your life better. So what is polyamory? Polyamory is, in short, having multiple romantic relationships with multiple people at the same time while everybody knows and it's all consensual. It is not cheating. It is not um, swinging, although a lot of people will relate swinging and polyamory just because they're uh, all different types of non-monogamy. And that's really, I guess, another way you could describe polyamory is as a, being ethically non-monogamous or consensually non-monogamous. And let me be very, very real with you. Being polyamorous involves having a very high level of emotional intelligence as well as having very good communication skills and if you don't have these skills you better be able to learn them very fast. <laughs> I do want to point out that I don't think that polyamory is more enlightened than monogamy. I know that sometimes people will make that statement and I just I don't think that's true. I think that some people are wired for monogamy, other people are wired for um, non-monogamy and that's just how life is. I don't think one is any better than the other. I just know that for me personally, uh, I am non-monogamous. From a cultural anthropological standpoint, polyamory has been around in various forms as long as humans have been around. You can go all the way back to um, like Mesopotamia and Egypt and find examples of it. And you can look today uh, and see uh, cultures today that also practice it. Some terms that you may have heard in the past might be polygamy, which means having multiple spouses, polygyny, which, which means having multiple wives, and polyandry, which means having multiple husbands. So those are all things that are talked about sometimes around poly, polyamory. But polyamory, in short, is everybody's on the same page with you having multiple, consen uh, multiple consensual, concurrent uh, romantic relationships. And I was really curious, and I went to go check Wikipedia, which I know that's not like a definitive um, scientific journal source, but they said that somewhere between four to five percent of people in the USA are practicing polyamory. And that works out to like, I think 17 million people or 17.5 million people. I will put the number up here. A Newsweek art article from May 2021 this year said that one in nine people practices polyamory here in the USA and one in six people has thought about it. I found that number very interesting because I would not have guessed the numbers were that high. So what are the different types of polyamory? Because I'm sure you're like, well, you keep talking about multiple relationships. What are you talking about? Two, uh, three people, 10 people, <laughs> more than two is a good way to put it. Um, there are so many different types of polyamorous relationships that I will not be able to cover all of them just because I don't know all of them. So I'm gonna talk about the ones that I know the most. So right off the bat, we have a hinge, which is sometimes referred to as a V. And the relationship that I was in the longest with my ex-husband and my partner, Dave, would have been considered a romantic V, meaning they were both romantic with me, but not with each other. And um, otherwise, we would be considered a triad because we all three lived together. Our finances were all intermingled. We planned vacations together. We um, were life partners. We did all of these things together. That was how we were doing it. That was what we wanted to do. And so that would um, be called a triad. If all three of us were romantic, or uh, sorry, if everybody involved is romantic, it's usually called a triad. But if it's if it's uh, not everybody is romantic together, then it's a, a, v, a v, a hinge. And I'm babbling. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I feel like the most common form of polyamory that you're likely to see on TV is going to be a triad, and people call it a thruple. I personally detest the term thruple. I think it's just, well, I don't know, that word just bothers me. I like triad. Triad is much better, <laughs> but that's just me personally. Um, I also really don't 
like to use that term. I like to use the term partner as opposed to to V or hinge or third or whatever, just because sometimes I feel like that sounds a little derogatory. So there's a quad and that's made up of four people. Um, there's all different ways to see people do quads. The quads I have seen the most that have been the most successful have usually been two married couples who get together and it's the four of them. Um, some of my closest friends here in Tampa, they're part of a quad. They've been together for like, I wanna say close to 15 years, something like that. There are common relationships, which are usually relationships where the people don't live very close together, but that they get together a couple times a year. And when they get together, everything is very intense. They don't really, they may have like um, overlapping interests that they might both be into kink or BDSM, but they may not have many other overlapping things, but those relationships are just as valid as a triad or a hinge or a quad. Um, you would also probably hear about solo polyamory and that's kind of where from my understanding you are your own like primary partner and everybody else uh, comes after you there's relationship anarchy which uh is i think an even more like extreme version of that where you don't have any you don't place any relationship uh, as above one another um let's see what else is there there's parallel poly where you can have a bunch of different partners and not everybody like knows each other like they'll know that you have these partners but they don't really interact there's kitchen table polyamory which is what i prefer which is where all of your partners and they often people will call your partners that you're not romantically involved with a metamor um where everybody will like sit down at the table go to movies together and hang out together and i was also in a relationship like that uh during my time in my v i also dated a i had a girlfriend for five years who had a husband and so she and i were romantically involved but she was not involved with um my ex-husband or with dave and i was not involved with her husband so that was just how our relationship was set up and you know the five of us spent a lot of time together we would go to movies together uh my ex-husband and her husband would brew beer together. Um, we would do, go dancing. We would just do, you know, hang out. We would just have a great time together. A term you might also hear in relation to polyamory would be polyfidelity. And that's where you're in a polyamorous relationship where you're closed and not accepting new partners. Um, I have done that in the past. I'm, I'm, I'm not doing that now. And like, it's usually something I see people do because they're, they've got to fix some other issues going on before they can think about adding another partner. In my opinion, it is never good to add a new partner if you have relationship problems. You need to fix your relationship problems first before you consider adding another per person to your relationship. It's not fair for you to spill your own issues onto another person, in my opinion. You may also hear people talk about things like prescriptive hierarchy. And prescriptive hierarchy means that it's like a defined hierarchy that's never going to change. There's also descriptive hierarchy, which basically describes um, like the current relationships and roles, and that seems to be more flexible and can change. I would say that uh, I, that, that I practice descriptive uh, hierarchy just to explain things so that you know people know that like i'm going to prioritize uh the person that i am mingling my finances with and for me descriptive hierarchy basically means that you know i my partner dave um and he and i have like a, a descriptive hierarchy because we live together uh our finances are mingled um you know like we plan our life together we're planning for retirement together we're basically on what you would consider a relationship escalator basically i feel i guess like descriptive hierarchy is a recognition that you're not going to treat everyone exactly the same or equal and that makes it very clear from the get-go with any new partners you have as to like what your obligations are but no matter how you decide to do polyamory as long as you are being honest and direct with your communication and everybody is on the same page and everybody agrees it's valid in my opinion despite me getting a divorce i still consider the v slash triad that i was in um to have been successful because the reason it ended was from us growing apart and um some other issues with my ex it was not for any other like reason other than just you know people change and if you don't change together and you start growing apart and people don't like it you got to move on not every relationship is meant to last and it's really good to appreciate a relationship for what it is oh i want to discuss polycules because that term will definitely get thrown at you if you're reading books and i feel like the not the well the way the best way i can describe a polycule is it's like a bunch of people who are polyamorous together um the most the longest running polyamorous fronts that i have are my parents age they're like between 65 and 70 71 something like that and um they've been practicing polyamory for since they were in their 20s so maybe like 50 years longer than i've been alive so let me let me give you like an explain explanation of their polycule because they're really neat people um you have the main 
two married, uh, there's a main married couple and the guy in the married couple has uh, another partner who's married to her husband, so two couples. And then he also has another lady that um, he's romantically involved with. And she also has another uh, man that she's romantically involved with, but they're not all like, they're not all bisexual and they're not all um, romantically involved, but they're all living together. They have two houses together. They have kids together. Um, and they just take care of each other. And I think it's so beautiful because they're, you know, they're older and I can see how, how successful they've been over the past 50 years. And they're just very supportive, wonderful people. And so you might see polycules like that where it's, a bunch of people that come together to make like a larger chosen family and they're not always necessarily romantic but they still definitely would consider themselves a polycule and they're all um, together so that's what I was, saying. I was saying there's so many different ways to do poly it can, it can be very very confusing now that you've seen like a whole bunch of different types of polyamory and you can understand why I say that there's more than I can even talk about because I'm just talking about like a few major types that I know of um, I want to talk to you about the best books to get you started with polyamory if you're looking for books to read because there are a lot of books out there and some books are complete trash. So I personally started with a book called The Ethical Slut which is by Dossie Easton and um, Janet Hardy. And when I read it years and years ago, it was different than the most the newest version that's out now. I want to read the new, newest version that's out now because apparently it includes a lot of stories from millennials and younger people about how they're currently being an ethical slut. So, um, I look at that as like one of the first books to start with just because it it basically kind of it speaks from more of like a sexual point of view than necessarily a romantic point of view but it talks to you about how to like own your own emotions and your and and how to really like try to think about having a relationship that is not monogamous and break out of like that standard pattern the book i've been recommending the most to people over the past year to read is poly secure which is by eve rickard and Jessica Fern. To me, this book is so helpful because number one, it talks to you about trauma and the different types of trauma and how those traumas affect your attachment styles for feeling secure in relationships. I've never seen any book do that before and as somebody who's gone through trauma, is processing trauma, is working through trauma and trying to be a better person and own all of my shit, I found it really cool. Um, I also like that basically when you go through it, it tells you like, okay, if you're having this type of attachment style or you're having a mixed attachment style, here's what you need to do so that you can feel more secure within your relationship and not feel jealous, like not, like not, I'm not going to say not ever feel jealousy, but so that you know that, you know, you're going to be safe no matter what. And that's why I think that that's a really great book to start with because I feel like it's so important. I feel like a lot of times when people think about opening up and trying polyamory, they don't do any research first. They're just like, oh yeah, we're uh, interested in this friend of ours. They're awesome. Let's just go do it. And that's fine. But if you don't do the research and don't, you know, put in the work, you're going to have a lot of trouble because it, think about like it, there's basically more than uh, double the amount of relationships you have going on just in the relationship um let's say just in a let's say just in a triad let's talk about just triad because that's an easy example you have the relationship between a and b so these two then you have the relationship between b and c so these two then you have the, the relationship between a and c and then you have the relationship between a b and c so that's basically four relationships that you have to be able to communicate and manage expectations expectations for it's a lot of work the third book on my list is the polyamory breakup book which is by kathy labriola this book is awesome it basically goes over um, all of the main reasons that polyamorous relationships can fail and the reasons that non-polyamorous relationships can fail. I found it incredibly useful and I'm using it basically as future reference for um, how to like basically cope and deal with the next breakups because you know having a breakup book that kind of makes me feel better and validates why I've made some of the decisions is just it's nice <laughs> and I think it's another great book to really learn from. I guess I feel like what particularly makes this book stand out to me is that because it draws from so many different personal experiences, it feels very like relatable to me and that's why I really like it. The next book I would like to recommend is The Smart Girl's Guide to Polyamory by Dee Decker Winston and I believe that she has a podcast that I'm going to start listening to called Multiamory. Um, this book is great. Like if you were looking for a book that has questions for you to ask yourself because um, it has like question prompts at the end of each chapter to try to help you figure out, is this for you? Am I going to do this? What problems am I going to run into? It's just a really, really great book. 
I basically feel like the Smart Goals Guide to Polyamory is equally as important, if not more so, than the Ethical Slit just because of how it has all of these awesome thought-provoking questions to really help you understand what you're getting yourself into. The next book on my list is by Kevin Patterson and it's called Love Is Not Colorblind. I picked this book up because I personally grew up in a conservative Christian church that taught the message, love's not colorblind. And I feel that that message is extremely harmful because I think it erases the experiences of people of color. Uh, I do see color. I do see how my white skin gives me lots of privilege. For me, this book was so important because I really do want to work to be actively inclusive instead of passively exclusive. And so, you know, that's stuff I've worked on in the Fear and X Hex Squad and everywhere. I'm doing the best that I can to educate myself to be a more like actively inclusive person. Okay, so this, this is the order that I would recommend reading those five books in. I would read The Smart Girl's Guide to Polyamory first. I would read Poly Secure second. I would read The Poly Breakup book third. I would read Love's Not Colorblind fourth. And then finally, I would finish with The Ethical Slut. That's just my personal opinion based on having read them in vastly different orders. <laughs> Um, there is a book I want to say that I do not recommend in my personal opinion based on my personal experiences. I purchased this book and read it and thought it was complete trash. This book is called More Than Two and it is by Franklin Vo and Eve Rickard. I know that I've mentioned Eve Rickard previously, but um, the book that she wrote with Jessica Fern is a much better book in my opinion. The reason I personally do not recommend More Than Two is because I knew Franklin Vo on a personal level here in Tampa. When he lived here, I've known many of his partners. I've seen how he has treated his partners. And in my personal opinion, his book on how to do, poor, uh, how to do polyamory lacks empathy. It, to me, comes across as he's always pushing off any of his partner's problems and emotions onto them. It's never on him and it's never his responsibility to try to help fix anything. And I feel like the book that he wrote and the messages that he has been pushing have done a lot of damage to the poly community, the polyamorous community. And so I do not recommend his book more than two because I feel like it has been damaging to people. I don't think it is a good book to start with. I think it is tainted. You can read about some of the experiences from people I know personally that have been involved with Franklin Vo on a website called I Tripped on the Poly Staircase. I'm going to put the URL up here and you can check it out if you want. But like I said, I personally do not recommend this book based on my personal experiences with him as a person and knowing some of his partners and things that have gone on. And I just feel like the messages that he's teaching have been very, very damaging. I've read a ton more books on the topics over the years, but these are really the ones that have stood out to me the most as having the most value and are worthwhile to share. Um, this is not to say there aren't other great books, but these are the ones that I think are great. If you are looking for famous people who practice polyamory, you can look at people like um, Will and Jada, Jada Smith. Uh, their daughter Will, Willow Smith also. Um, <laughs> if you think about uh, Growing up, Lisa from The Simpsons, I believe she has two girlfriends in the future, so I think that's in Simpsons canon. So she clearly is polyamorous or in some sort of a non-monogamous ethical relationship because it's Lisa Simpson. Of course she's going to be ethical. As far as writers go, off the top of my head, I know that Laurel K. Hamilton is polyamorous as well. If you are looking for more YouTube channels that talk about polyamory and explain more about like some of the questions or problems you might run into within a polyamorous relationship, I can recommend a couple channels to you with the caveat that all of the ones that I watch are also kink friendly because that's what I'm interested in. In my personal friend circle, I think I mentioned, there's a lot of overlap in the polyamorous community and in the kink community and in the LGBTQIA2 uh, two spirit community. I am personally obsessed with Evie Lupine's channel. You've heard me mention her before. She's a um, she's great. She speaks about demisexuality, asexuality, uh, polyamory, and BDSM. And she also sometimes will touch on um, like some of the more problematic cult, uh, celebrities like Army Hammer or Marilyn Manson. She'll touch on stuff like that. So I think she's absolutely wonderful, and I enjoy all of her live streams. I also love and recommend Cat Black's channel. She talks about transness. Um, queerness, blackness, kink, polyamory, relationships, and more from her own personal life experiences. I recently started watching the Wicked Wednesdays channel, which is about BDSM, kink, and polyamory. Uh, they, he also does a podcast, if you like podcasts. And the newest channel that I add to watch to this mix is called What's the Safe Word? And it's basically like a um, another BDSM, LGBTQIA, two-spirit friendly um, sex education channel. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this chatty video about polyamory, like what it is, the different types of polyamory, and my top five favorite books, the books and sources I don't recommend, all of that. 
Um, please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Uh, this is something that, you know, I don't think I've ever really shared with you in detail before and I thought you might be interested in. So yeah, let me know what your thoughts are. I love you and I'll see you next time. Bye.